I wish I had time to talk about time. What, what do you do when the clock is against you and, and, and you have enough wisdom to do it over, but you don't have enough time to do it over? What do, you, what do you do when you've missed your season and you've missed your window of opportunity? What, what do you do when you, you know that you've got the desire to do it and you've got the passion to do it, but, but you look in the mirror and the, and the wrinkles in your face and the sagging of your body indicates you don't have time to do this all over again. She says, I don't have time to get pregnant again. I don't have have a second chance at life. My life is over. Go away. Don't hang around me. I have nothing left to give. There are people that when you start running out of time, you get bitter. You get desperate. You start pushing people away from you because they're asking something of you that you don't think you can give anymore. And you find yourself in a place of depletion and it feels like God has forgotten you. But I remind you, nothing just happens. This is the Potter's Touch. Greetings, brothers and sisters, in the name of Jesus Christ, our King. I am so blessed and so excited to have the opportunity to share the word with you. I'm excited about the word. I still get excited about the word. been preaching 37 years. I still love his word. I love what it does in your life and in your heart. I love how it strengthens you. I love how it helps you. I've got a message that I believe you are going to love. Take a look. When we look at the theology in the book of Ruth, we know that the book of Ruth is a template for a far larger issue loaded with shadows and types. It brings to us significant issues as it challenges us to understand that all of the characters in the book of Ruth are the backdrop for historical data that points to a panoramic view of the life of Jesus Christ and the fulfillment of Jesus Christ. And suddenly we begin to recognize that when we look at a character like Elimelech, we are looking at a relationship between him and his wife and how when Elimelech died, uh, uh, Naomi became very, very bitter. And, and in the same sense, Israel became very bitter as they lost relationship with Jehovah and, and it was widowed as it were and estranged, a cast away woman who had become very bitter because she was denied relationship with Jehovah. And we see the two sons and seeing the splitting of the nation of Israel down to the tribe of Judah. And we begin to see how they break and divide and then die. And through their death and the famine thereof, we see Ruth, who is a Moabite woman who is connected to them uh, by marriage. And now her husband has died and she is estranged and she goes back to Moab, goes back to Bethlehem uh, with Naomi, Ruth being a type of the church, Naomi being a type of Israel. The church gets connected to God through Israel who walks her back home to Boaz who is a type of Christ and Boaz who stands there and sees Ruth over in the corner gleaning in the corners of the field, spies her and brings her from the background to the forefront, covers her with his skirts, makes her his wife, legitimizes her, authentic Authenticates her, causes her to be an heir of a grace of which she would have been estranged had her blood prevailed. But because his blood prevailed over her blood, he was able to. It's just a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful story. A famine has arose in this text in a family who is headed by Elimelech. And they leave Bethlehem, the house of bread, because of the severity of the famine, and they go to Moab. Everybody's running for their lives, running for their lives. They go into Moab for survival's sake, thinking that they were going to be there a short time, end up being there 10 years. Elimelech is strong enough to get Naomi out of there with their two sons and get them out of uh, Bethlehem to Moab, but he dies in Moab, he dies in Moab, and now Naomi is widowed, surviving a famine, raising two sons in a foreign country, unable to get back home because of the famine, trying to survive against adversity, and then she loses her two sons. Two sons. Now the woman has had a dead husband and now lost two sons. The husband you might could tolerate, you might could say, well, it was, he was up in years, he was up in age, it makes sense. But to lose two sons, in the space of 10 years, she has lost every man she has ever loved. 
exasperated and frustrated, she makes up in her mind, this is enough for me. We're coming to the end of the famine. I want to go back home. There is nothing left for me. She makes a statement. She says, I went out full and I came back empty. In other words, there was a famine, but I was still blessed. It's amazing because sometimes you cannot know you're blessed because you're going through a famine only to find out that the thing that you were worried about is not nearly as significant as the thing that you had. In the midst of her famine, she still had her husband and her children. Sometimes you can have something and not appreciate it until you lose it. After that, she lost her husband and her children. The famine seemed insignificant by comparison. I say that because sometimes you're whining about things that really don't matter. You're upset about things that really don't make any difference in your life. And if you were smart, you would learn how to count your blessings and to thank God for what he's done in your life. It looked like all hell had broken loose in her life. The famine, who would have thought that a famine would come and disrupt this relatively wealthy family and cause them to flee like vagrants and move into Moab and uproot all of their heritage and leave their home and their surrounding and their friends and find themselves in Moab? Who would have thought that having gone to Moab that she would lose the husband she was relying on to be her sustenance, her source, her friend and her support. He died and left her there. Who, who, who would have thought that having lost her husband, she goes to rely on her sons and both, not one, but both sons die. Who would have thought that this woman would end up uh, in a a female feminine trinity of three women whose only thing that they now share in common is that all of them have gone through death. Three women, Naomi, who is the older woman, and Ruth, who would have, who was her daughter-in-law, and Orpah, who was her other daughter-in-law. Three women whose common uh, commonality was pain. Pain is a strange company keeper. It brings the oddest people together. There is a secret fraternity that exists amongst those who have been in pain that is mind boggling. It transcends the color of your skin. It transcends your background. When you've been through certain things, you feel for other people who have been through those things because you relate to them. And so the women shared a tear together. They wept together. They cried together. They shared pain together. They shared burial together. They shared their losses together. They shared their emptiness together. Naomi decided this is it. Got to split. I'm going to quit. I'm going back home where I came from. Got to go. Can't take any more. I'm going back home. I'm bitter, but I'm going back home bitter. I'm frustrated, but I'm going back home. And they fell on Naomi and began to weep because Naomi had left a significant impression on them. And all of a sudden, in the midst of this pain, uh, Naomi starts reasoning with them. Stop crying. Stop crying. I have no options. What am I going to do? She said, if I'm married today and had more children, what are you going to do? Wait for the children to become grown that they might be your husbands again? She says, I'm out of the game. The clock is against me. Oh, I wish, I wish I had time. At, at this age, at this stage, there's a reason why it happened at this age. There's a reason why it happened at this level in life. It's not a mistake. It's not an accident. God didn't fall asleep on the job and the devil came in and wrecked the car. No, God never sleeps and he never slumbers. He's in complete control and he knows where you are and he knows how old you are and he knows how much time you spent and he knows what happened to you and he knows who walked out and left you and he knows who betrayed you and he knows who molested you and he knows who raped you and he knows who rejected you and he knows where you are in life and he knows about your bills and he knows about your degree and he knows you dropped out of school and he knows about what you didn't get and he knows about the health of your child and he knows about the condition of your neighborhood understand that and tell yourself nothing just happens